Now let's go ahead and check out that how we can create routes using Vapor. I'm going to go into my routes file. And as mentioned before, when you create an application in Vapor, it already comes with these two default routes, the root route and the hello route. I can go ahead and run my application or run the server by pressing this play button. Make sure that your Mac is selected. So if I run this right now, it is going to tell me which port number and what will be the URL. You can keep looking over there in your output window because it is going to get displayed over there. There we go. I can go to this particular URL and if I simply go to that URL, it's going to invoke the root route. So it simply says it works, which is this route. If I want to go to the hello route, then the only thing I need to do is to go back and append hello to the route. And now it goes to a different route called hello world and it returns us this information. You're more than welcome to create other routes if you want to. Let's say that if I want to create a route called movies, I can go ahead and create a route and I can say that this route will be called movies. I will get access to the request object. The request object req or you can call it anything you want. It, this is the actual request coming from the client. Async because now we have support for async instead of callbacks. It's going to return a string and now we can return whatever we want. So I can simply say over here movies. Since I added a brand new route, I would create or I would run the server again, stop it and run it again so that it can see this new route that I just added. Now, if I go to movies, I should be able to invoke the movies route. Great. Apart from that, you can also create routes that are more nested. So let's say that we want to create a route for movies, but we also are interested in allowing the user to pass in uh, the genre like action. So this means that this particular route will be movies slash action. Let's go ahead and run our application. And now I can go ahead and simply go to movies slash action. You can see that it still shows me the movies route, which is fine. I mean, I can go ahead and return something else if I want to, like action movies. That is fine. And now I can go to action and it will say action movies. So movies slash action. Now, Right now, we're only dealing with action, but we can have other routes for horror movies and kids movies and comedy movies. And one solution would be to simply copy this route and paste it like four or five times and change the action to horror and kids and comedy and something else. But in Vapor, you can have dynamic route parameters. This means that instead of creating 12 different routes, we know that this is the only part that is changing. Sometime it will be action, sometime it will be horror, sometime it will be comedy. So these are called route parameters. This is meaning that the first part of our route will start with movies, which is good, which is matching. And the second part of the route, you can send in anything you want. We will place it in a variable called genre. This means that this particular route that we just created, it's going to match many different routes. It will going to match movies slash action, movies slash horror. It's going to match movies slash kids. It's even going to match movies slash ABC. I mean, it's going to match anything that's starting with the movies slash anything. So the next question would be, if you're passing a genre over here, let's say action or whatever, how can you access that genre? 
Again, there are multiple ways of accessing the value of the route parameter that you're passing. One of the ways is to use request.parameters and then using the get function on the parameters. The get function, you will pass in the name of the route parameter. The name of the route parameter that you said is going to be genre, but it can be anything. So I'm just going to say genre. I will get the genre and then I can return whatever I want. All movies of genre, and then we can simply inject the genre value. All right. So one of the things that we have to do over here, let's go ahead and I think it's, we're using self-describing or something. That's fine. Let's stop the server. And we are going to, trying to see if we can stop the server and start the server again. And then we will try to invoke this particular movies genre. So if I go to action movies, it says all movies of genre. You can see it's saying optional action. The reason it's saying optional is because when we get the value from over here, this is going to return you optional. Okay. Now you can unwrap it. That is perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and unwrap it. But what should we do if we are not able to unwrap it? Well, in those cases, we can't really do anything. We will simply go ahead and abort. And in the abort, we can say it's a bad request. So we're going to throw an error saying that it's going to be a bad request. But we can't really throw from inside this function. So we will have to decorate it with async throws also. So that we know that we can actually uh, do that. And now I can go ahead and kind of like remove that and simply add the genre. Okay. Let's go ahead and stop the server and run the server again. I'll also check out that why it keeps on giving me all of this information, like running it on the desktop. But let me go ahead and uh, refresh it. And now you can see that whatever the genre that we're passing, that's the genre that we are able to extract out. So I can go ahead and change it to horror. And now I'm getting the horror. Now I can go ahead and change it to kids. And now I can access the kids. So instead of creating, let's say, 10 different routes for each genre, we just created one single route and we use dynamic parameters. These are all known as route parameters, dynamic parameters. Uh, they all have kind of like the same purpose. Uh, you can say whatever you want over here. I usually refer to them as route parameters because they are parameters of the route. Okay. So this is how you are going to access route parameters. The route parameters are not like you can have only one of them. I mean, you can have more route parameters if you need. Right now, we only have one, which is matching the genre, but you can have other route parameters. I mean, if you want to say, uh, movie slash action and then whatever the year is, you can have these kind of route parameters. I can say app dot get movies. And in this case, the route parameter is again genre, but the other route parameter that we need is a year. So I'm just going to go ahead and create another route parameter for year. And I will get the request async throws. It's going to return string. Eventually, you will see that we'll be returning JSON, but right now we are, yes, returning string. Now we can go ahead and unwrap or extract out the genre. Apart from the genre, the other thing that we need probably will be the year. So request.parameters.get, and we will need the year. If one of them is, well, blank or you don't pass it, then we're going to throw an error. And we can say all movies of genre for year, and then the value of the year, we can inject it over here. So now we have created another route, which is going to match URLs like this. It will have the action, and it will have some sort of a year. Let's go ahead and see if this runs. I'm going to go ahead and run the application. and. Now I can say movie slash kids, which is fine. But what about movie slash kids slash 2023? 
oops, 2023, there we go. So now you can see that we are able to extract out not only the genre part of it, which is kids, but also the year route parameter, which is 2023. But it can be anything. I mean, it can be 2020. Uh, and you are able to extract out all of those different things. Okay. So this is kind of like the very basic of routing in Vapor and the route parameters. We will also cover that how you can create our, your parameters that are based on uh, the query string. We will also cover decoding and coding and all of those different things. So stay tuned for that. This video is brought to you by my new course, Mastering Full Stack iOS Development Using Swift UI and Vapor. This is a brand new course that I just published. It already has close to 200 students. Let's check out the contents of the course. You can see this is a close to 12 hour course, and this is going to cover getting started with Vapor, routing controllers, middleware, Postgres SQL integration, and then we will create the complete grocery app with JWT authentication, Postgres database, you will learn about creating DTO packages. You will learn about the server side, which is in Vapor, but also the client side, which is in Swift UI. You will also learn about the error handling, routing, authentication, protecting your routes, deployment, and even a small tour, a quick tour of Vapor with MongoDB. So this is the best course on server side Swift available anywhere online. And if you want to check out this course, register for this course and check out the link in the YouTube description. Thank you so much. Now, one of the things that Vapor provides you is you can also access the route parameters strongly typed because Swift is a strongly typed language. It's not JavaScript or anything. So strongly typed language like Swift can allow you to access those parameters uh, using type specific inference. Let's go ahead and see what I mean. If I go ahead and create a particular route, and I say this route is customers, but you can also pass in a customer ID. So that will be our route parameter. Now the customer ID in this case will be probably an integer, right? I mean, one, two, 12, and so on. So we'll do the request throws, and right now we'll just return whatever we need. It doesn't really matter. There are multiple ways for us to get the customer ID. We can use the same technique that we were using over here to get the year. We can get the customer ID, but that will be in string format because when you type in the URL, by default, everything is just in string format. But I don't really want to get the string format because I know that the customer ID will be integer. So instead of using the get function for the name, I'm going to use a second one, which where I can provide the name of the route parameter, which in this case is customer ID. And what kind of a type is it? So it will be integer. So integer.self meaning it will be an integer type. This is going to give us some sort of an optional. So I'm just going to go ahead and unwrap it using guard. And if there's a problem, then we can go ahead and throw the error, which is saying bad request. Finally, we can return the new customer ID that we actually got. So I'm just going to go ahead and say customer ID. Great. Now, if I go ahead and build the application, you will see that I am able to invoke this URL with a customer ID. So I'm going to pass over here 12 and making sure that you're running. So press the run button, obviously. And now if I go back and simply go ahead and refresh this page, I can pass in any number that I want. And that, since it's an integer, we'll be able to get that. But what happens if I go ahead and pass in something that is not an integer. Well, in those cases, I will get the bad request because the error has happened and this bad request is going to get called. So either way, I'm protected against people who are passing in alphabets instead of numbers. So this is an important point because it makes your life a little bit more easier. If you are passing customer ID, if you're passing some sort of an ID, which is an integer. And most of the time, 
we are passing IDs that are integers. Like if you're fetching movies by ID, we are fetching a post or a blog by ID and so on. So this technique can be quite helpful since it is strongly typed and we are invoking over here, we are saying that the customer ID parameter, the route parameter is of type integer. So definitely a good way to write code when we have the availability of strong types.